We are outside of Houston, Texas here with Ames Construction visiting the new BNSF Logistics Center. There's a rail line just over there about 100 yards that way. They're going to spur off of that rail line into this new area. It's about a 1500 acre development where they'll be able to use to park trains and move cargo around to get that cargo across the United States a little bit more effectively. Before they can do all that, before trains can show up, Ames Construction's here to prepare the site. So they've recently cleared the land. It's a lot of pine here. They've cleared it, and now they're moving the dirt with tractors, single engine scrapers, and articulated trucks. So we saw the safety meeting. We did our stretch and flex. Let's go see what the heck they're doing. I actually can't see out of these. All right, I don't need to see. Um, I think behind me, I can't see with my fogged up glasses, but we have the 631 scraper spread. These are single engine scrapers. So you'll see that D10 pushing them through the cut. Why is the blade so small on the D10? That's because it is what's known as a push cat. And that is a blade designed to push scrapers. So it's still a blade. That dozer can grade that cut to make it easier for the scrapers to get through, but it's really designed to line up with the push block on the back of that scraper. You see it right there? And put all of the power of that dozer behind that scraper to fill it as fast as possible. If you look really closely, and hopefully we can get footage of it, it there's a spring actually behind the blade. So as the, scra uh, as the dozer comes into the scraper, it gently, it's called a cushion blade, gently, gently lines up with that push block, shoves the scraper through the cut. These things are probably filling in about 15 seconds and then they're off to that fill side. Super fast. To explain what the 631s behind me are doing, this is a pond on the outskirts of the project. We started at the far end. It was a long drive to get over here, a huge site. When you disturb this amount of land, put something on this land, whether it be a subdivision, warehouses, in this case, a, a uh, logistics center, you need to do something with all of the storm water that falls here. There's a lot of rain. They've said there's been a lot of rain days on this project. Uh, all that water needs to go somewhere. So this pond that they're digging right behind me is where a lot of the water is going to go. There'll be multiple ponds throughout this project to retain all of that storm water. But since it's not wet, they have to put a lot of water down because it's dusty. The material in Houston uh, for lack of a better term, sucks. It is full of this terrible clay mixed with sand. So, uh, I'm not strong enough. Here, you can see that. All the different colors. It goes into the scrapers nice and easy right now when it's semi-dry. But when this gets water on it, those tires do nothing but spin. You can't do a whole lot with it. So they're trying to make the most of it when it's dry like this, make hay while the sun's shining. That's exactly what they're doing. They're blowing and going, moving as quickly as they can while they have the dry weather. Because this material 
is pretty unforgiving. Right behind me is a Caterpillar 395 loading, articulated trucks, John Deere and Caterpillar. Haul trucks, 40, 45 ton machines. They're taking this little layer off. All of that is basically what they started with after they cleared the site. They're basically taking the hills, the natural contouring out of the site. So this is one of the lower areas, obviously. It's a smaller cut. It's not exactly what you'd want for a machine that size, but the machines here, you can cut a few feet, no problem. Next to the machine is that D6 with GPS. So as that excavator digs, that GPS is grading the floor to wherever they need it to be. The PM explained to me, they're basically doing all of the bulk earthworks right now. They're about 60% complete on the bulk earthworks. Uh, over 4 million yards on this job. And then there's a lot of detail work when they're, that, that they're gonna do after they're done with the bulk work. So get all of the bulk material moved and then they're gonna come in here with blades and dozers to cut the ditches and roads and all of the details that are necessary before they start putting in the infrastructure, paving, rail lines, all that jazz. That's really cool. It's the first time I've seen those, those double pans. That works like a charm. That right there is a K-Steiger tractor pulling two K-Tech pans, 1233 pans. I need to double check what size they are, but I believe that means they're 33 yards. I'm not sure what, how the K-Tech convention goes, but two pans pulled by a tractor pushed by a D8 over there. So you'll see the D8 getting up on the push block on that back pan. They only load one at a time. So that first pan will lower down into the ground, drag across the ground as it's getting pushed, pulled by the tractor, fills up, fills up, fills up. Then it lifts up, closes the apron, and then drops that second pan into the ground and loads that second pan and takes it all the way down there to that fill area. I fact-checked myself, I googled the K-Tech 1233. This strong multi-purpose machine carrying a heaped capacity of 33 yards or 25.23 cubic meters. So that is heaped, struck I believe is around 17. Heaped means, so struck is if you filled that thing with water. Wherever that water level is, that is the struck capacity you, you basically get all of that fluff off the top. It's even with the sides of that scraper. Heaped is all of this fluff that you can fit in there, fit as much material as you want in there. That is that heaped capacity. So you'll see as it's loaded, it boils up, it heaps up there. 
and that is that 33 yard capacity. Double pan. Shout out to Ariat for making some great footwear. All right, we saw the site. Now to go into the office to learn more about what the heck's going on here. So come on. So for, for this purpose, so over here this morning, roughly. Exactly. Yeah, so the lineup was here. 395 is working right about here. The tractors are somewhere over here. All of the trucks that are hauling from the 349, 395, the tractors, they're hauling to this fill right in here. And then the scrapers, the 631s, were cutting in this pond on the far side. Okay, <clears throat> well with that, that's our visit to the Logistics Center here, Texas. It is so hot, it is so humid. Thanks to Ames Construction for having us out. They are hiring. Check out the website in the bio if you want to go work for a company that does sweet projects like this all across the country.